Saturday, July 10th, 1971. Edward Paisnell, a 46-year-old man who was pulled over by police. He had no violent history and lived with his wife Joan and her children. He had even dressed as Santa Claus for foster home orphans on Christmas. After 14 years of malicious crimes and taunting the police, he was finally caught by mere chance, leaving evidence of Satanism in his wake. What police discovered could only be compared to Richard Ramirez. For over a decade, residents of the remote Channel Island of Jersey feared finding a mass intruder in their homes. There were no alarm systems at the time, and hardly any law enforcement at hand. A cut of the cord easily destroyed home telephones. As such, over a dozen women and children met a faceless shape that came to be known as the Beast of Jersey. Longlegs was inspired by other movies by the name of Silence of the Lambs and Seven. But with some research, you find out that the Zodiac Killer also inspired Longlegs in a real life case that was not known by many, which involves a man by the name of Edward Paisno. Edward Paisno was born in 1925. While the exact date and location of his birth are unclear, the brick came from a family of means. He was barely a teenager when the United Kingdom declared war on Germany in 1939 and was at one point briefly imprisoned for stealing food to give to starving families. Paisnell's crimes began in early 1957, long before he garnered his infamous moniker of the Beast of Jersey Mask. With a scarf over his face, the 32-year-old approached a young woman, waiting for a bus in Montes Alave district and tied a rope around her neck. He forced her to a nearby field and fled. Targeting bus stops and using isolated fields became his thing. Paisno assaulted a 20-year-old woman in the same manner in March. He repeated this in July, then again in October 1959. All of his victims described their attacker as having a musty stench. Within a year, that smell wafted into homes. It was Valentine's Day 1960 when a 12-year-old boy awoke to find a man in his bedroom. The intruder used a rope to force him outside and into a nearby field to surprise him. In March, a woman at a bus stop asked a man parked nearby if he could give her a ride. It was Edward Paisner, who drove her to a field and raped her. He targeted a 43-year-old woman's remote cottage next. She was awoken by an alarming noise at 1.30 a.m. and tried calling the police, but Paisnell cut the phone lines. Though he violently confronted her, she was able to escape and find help. She returned to find him gone and her 14-year-old daughter left behind, raped. <laughs> Paisno began exclusively targeting children at this point, invading a 14-year-old's bedroom in April. She awoke to find him watching her from the shadows, but screamed so loud that he fled. An eight-year-old boy in July, meanwhile, was taken from his room and raped in the field only for Paisno himself to walk the boy back home. It took long enough, but police began questioning all residents with criminal records with 13 of them, including Paisno, refusing to provide fingerprints. The suspect list was narrowed. Police believed a fisherman named Alfonso Legastelos was their man, although the only evidence they had was that he was a known eccentric. With Legastelos' image plastered across the newspapers, Vigilante soon burned down his house. He left the island for good, with the Beast of Jersey's attack resuming thereafter and three more children being raped mass wearing of psychopath by April 1961. And meanwhile, Paisno was volunteering at community homes with children in his care. He and his wife even took home the children, with Paisno accused of abusing both 
the staff and orphans he was asked to assist with. While none of it was ever reported, Scotland Yard finally began to help local police with the profile of their suspect. The rapist was estimated to be between 40 and 45 years old, five feet, six inches tall, and wearing either a mask or a scarf. He smelled terrible and attacked between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. He invaded homes through bedroom windows and used a flashlight. Curiously, the Beast of Jersey soon vanished, only to return in 1963. After two years of radio silence, the Beast of Jersey resurfaced. Between April and November of 1963, he ran sodomized four girls and boys he had snatched from their bedrooms. While he yet again disappeared for another two years, a letter appeared at the Jersey police station in 1966, taunting police. It chastised investigators for being incompetent, while proudly proclaiming that the author had committed the perfect crime. It also stated that this wasn't satisfying enough and that two more people would be victimized. That August, a 15-year-old girl was snatched from her home and covered in scratches. The same exact thing happened in, to a 14-year-old boy in August 1970, and the boy told police the attacker wore a mask. Fortunately, the Beast of Jersey mask would never be donned again, as 46-year-old Paisner was pulled over for running a red light in a stolen car in St. Helier District on July 10, 1971. Police found a wig, cords, tape, and the ominous mask inside. Paisner wore a raincoat with tails fitted on the cuffs and shoulders and had a flashlight on his person. He claimed that he was on his way to an orgy, but he was taken into custody instead. A search of his home yielded a hidden room with photographs of local properties, a sword, and an altar covered with books on the occult and black magic. Paisner's trial began on November 29th, it took a mere 38 minutes of deliberation for the jury to find him guilty. Convicted of 13 counts of rape, sexual assault, and sodomy against six of his victims, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Disturbingly, Edward Paisner was released for good behavior in 1991, but died of a heart attack three years later. To this day, evidence of his abuse at various children's homes continues to surface.